Thank you very much, Liz, and it's uh, terrific uh, t t to be here. Uh, I, I do travel a lot, so uh, if it's Monday, it must be uh, Washington, right? <laughs> I hope. And uh, 2049, I look forward to uh, coming back on that year with all of you in this room and <laughs> <coughs> celebrating the 100th anniversary of the, uh, the People's Republic of China. Uh, Liz sort of set this up, I think, very nicely in that, um, uh, yes, China is going to uh, hit its growth target um, that is so precious to uh, the nation's leaders and to its people this year, even in the face of a, um, sorry, serious, uh, uh, I should say terribly serious uh, global uh, crisis and recession. So if you judge China on the basis of hitting the target, uh, all seems well uh, on the surface. And um, it's not just that China is achieving its own uh, aspirations, but um, it, it growing close to 8 percent, it, it'll play a, a very important role. <coughs> in providing a broad impetus to the uh, uh, overall economy in Asia. And uh, it will play, uh, obviously, an important role in providing uh, impetus to an otherwise very sluggish uh, global economy. So on the surface, you know, you can say that China has arrived not just as an engine of uh, Asian uh, growth, but also as a powerful engine <coughs> of global, global economic growth. The story does not stop there, though. You, you have got to dig beneath the surface in assessing uh, the role of China uh, as an autonomous source of growth in and of itself, as a source of growth for Asia, and as a source of growth uh, for uh, the broader world economy. The best assessment of this uh, conundrum has been uh, provided by China's own premier, uh, Wen Jiabao. When a little over uh, two and a half years ago, at the conclusion of the National People's Congress in Beijing, uh, at a press conference that, that, that he held right, right after that uh, Congress uh, was, was over, he stated categorically that while China looks strong on the surface in terms of GDP growth, in terms of employment growth, beneath the surface, he, the premier, was worried about a Chinese economy that uh, at the time was increasingly unstable, unbalanced, uncoordinated, and ultimately unsustainable. And he was dead right. And interestingly enough, at a conference that uh, I attended in Dalian in um, mid-September that Liz was also there, the Premier was the keynote speaker and everybody expected him to come in and boast about uh, China's vigorous recovery and its leadership role in Asia and the broader global economy. He said no. The recovery is something that gratifies us, but it's fragile and it reflects an economy that is increasingly, in his views, unbalanced, unstable uncoordinated uh, and ultimately unsustainable. What, what does he mean by that, by expressing uh, those concerns? In terms of the, uh, the imbalances, they're very clear. They, they reflect extraordinary distortions in the macro structure of the, the Chinese economy. A couple of numbers say it all. Uh, as of right now, literally 80 percent of the country's uh, GDP is concentrated in two sectors, exports and export-led fixed investment. By contrast, the internal private consumption share of the Chinese GDP was 35 percent last year and fell below that uh, by the middle of this year. It's an economy that is as a result, more about supply than about internal demand, an economy that direct directs 
an increasing portion of its production to external markets rather than one that is supported by internal markets. This is a key and critical issue uh, that I'll come back to uh, in a couple of uh, moments. By uh, unstable, uh, the, the Premier was uh, referring to China's <coughs> inordinate uh, and uh, increasingly intensive use of energy and other scarce resources such that the commodity intensity of the Chinese GDP per unit of GDP is more than double that of the, um, uh, the typical economy in developing Asia and more than four times that of the typical developed economy. So China has a seemingly insatiable demand for natural resources that is being expressed right now on a real-time basis uh, in its um, uh, outward bound foreign direct investment in trying to acquire strategic resources in Australia, in South America, uh, and in Africa in the, the commodity producing area. And of course this insatiable demand for commodities uh, has played an important role in driving the prices of these very commodities that are resource inefficient China needs more and more of uh, to source its economic growth. By uncoordinated, the Premier was referring to the well-known and long-standing fragmentation of the Chinese uh, structure of governance, uh, corporate control, and the financial system. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, uh, the mountains are high and the emperor is so far away. And it's, it's emblematic of a China that um, has a control problem in Beijing. And beyond um, the confines of Beijing, the provinces and, and the uh, municipalities uh, in many respects still today uh, do what they please, what, what, which is in their best interest rather than what is in the best interest of the nation as a whole. And this lack of coordination uh, certainly undermines the cohesion that any national economy uh, needs to accomplish uh, uh, broad objectives. And the unsustainability <coughs> that the Premier was referring to, uh, and, and I'm, you know, these, these are sort of my interpretations, but these are interpretations that he himself has fleshed out somewhat in subsequent speeches. The unsustainability uh, is, is, is right up uh, Liz Economy's um, uh, alley, and that is it refers to the, uh, the pollution intensive character of um, uh, China's uh, economic growth and how ultimately <coughs> uh, this puts a stranglehold uh, on uh, the world's uh, largest uh, population mass. So the, the interesting thing is, is that here's a leader of, of this vast nation that has um, experienced the most phenomenal progress that any of us have seen in our lifetimes with respect to economic development. And he's sending repeated warnings about these four uns, uh, as we call them, uh, that draw into serious question as to whether or not China can stay the, uh, the, the current uh, course. And I think um, it's, it's a, a really good place to start in trying to get an assessment of what lies ahead in uh, uh, China. And I think it's a, it's a framework that, that also uh, sheds an awful lot of light on what uh, the broader economies of developing Asia face as well uh, in the years ahead because China does not have uh, a, a monopoly uh, on an economy that's unstable, unbalanced, uncoordinated, and unsustainable. In many respects, uh, these characteristics personify uh, many of the other economies uh, in developing Asia, although I hesitate and I caution all of you against painting uh, Asia with uh, one brush. The <coughs> interesting thing about the, um, the, the success